so what we got here is a green white devotion deck it is mainly white devotion splash green for some card advantage and removal um, so it's your traditional core in white devotion of heliod sun's crown so when you gain life you put counters on things pride mate you have daxos healer hawk um, all, all seed for protection trying out one beloved princess just as another life linker in the one drop slot wanted to have about nine one drops that had life link um, so then you have Knight of Autumn that gain, gain you life, but also is flexible in other ways. Uh, some Omens uh, to gain you life and create some more tokens that can then trigger Daxos. It also stays on the board, so it's kind of a more permanent uh, devotion for Heliod. I uh, want to try out some Mothras, uh, Luminous Broodmoths. When your creatures die, they can come back with flying. Pretty good with he uh, Pride Mate because it gives it uh, pseudo... Um, what am I saying? Uh, pseudo evasion. Um, I should actually play Shadow Sphere. Okay, slight tweak by Beloved Princess. We're playing Shadow Sphere. Um, some Conclave Tribunals for removal. A Johnny. We'll see how uh, Trustani does. Create some lifelink tokens. Vivian's for card advantage, but can also, depending on what you cast, go find you other creatures. And then some Great Henges. So, something I want to see with this deck is how reasonable it is to cast the Great Henge. We're not playing anything like Lovestruck Beast or Rotting Regisar that can let us turn for this. Um, so it's something I want to see how it works out. Um, sideboard wise, really nothing, or mana base wise, nothing too special. Sideboard, uh, Giant Killers versus Big Creatures, Devout Decree versus the Rakdos decks, Hushbringers versus Rakdos as well, anything with ETB style effects, um, Gideon versus Control. Knight of Autumn first like Wreck, Wander first Wreck and Cycling, and then some Questing Beast. Yeah, I, I want to see how reasonable, because the biggest knock with Mono White is um, you play out your board, if they interact with you, especially with a board wipe, you basically lost. Um, there's not really much uh, card advantage, and it's not like um, historic Mono White, where you have stuff like... Um, Soul Warden, Sarah Ascendant, um, the the four mana dude that goes and finds two one ones. Josh Lucian, thanks for the follow. Yeah, there's some options for mono white. Um, I want to see with them repainting temples. It kind of limits the effectiveness of aggro's uh, mana base. I was hoping for some untapped lines. Um, I think the first deck though that, I, so I'm part of the early streamer event again. Um, the first deck I'm probably going to be playing, probably keep this. Opponent goes first, we can likely draw one drop if not another land. Um, I'm going to play an Ugin deck for sure. Probably a uh, teamer Ugin. And then uh, I really want to build Jund with the new Liliana. Just play like Croxa and a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, so opponent's Simic, Fiend Artisan. Crazy Mike, so Teamer, who Teamer Elementals. Yeah, that deck's always a little tough. Um, so I think we shock in here. Tack in. Just play this out. This can be used just to find, I guess, stuff like Omnath. They only have one other elemental, so if they have Omnath this turn, it doesn't kill Pride Mate. Mainboard Lava Coil. So here I'm just gonna exile the fiend art is uh probably risen reef. This isn't really going anywhere right now. Kinda feel bad that uh bottom that land.
So I'm, even if we drew a land, then I could have done this and this. Fortunately here... I need to get this off the battlefield. It's going to start getting big. Just hold back. If they don't get anything else in the graveyard, it at least holds back the Fiend Artisan. Nisa. We don't draw land here. I think we're dead anyways. All right. Not the best showing to start off. Um, so this, this is a tricky one because this for everything except Uro is very good against the deck, but against Uro in particular, it's not that great. I think we still run it. Uh, so giant killers for sure. The wanderer is good and probably just some questing beasts. It trades with a lot of stuff. Uh, coming out, knight of autumns aren't that good. Don't need shadow sphere here. Three cards to cut. Probably... Life gain could be reasonable there. Maybe an omen. I want to try out Trust Annie. So maybe it's just these omens. They have Omnath to pick off stuff. So we'll run it like that. I don't think Flower Flourish would be necessary in this deck. We're not like a swarm deck. We don't really have a payoff. Yeah, let's try it. We got Vivian to get us going. So lead all seed on one. Don't think this deck's playing too much in terms of one mana stuff. Main board Lava Coil wasn't something I was planning on playing around. Still think we just Fable Passage here. Don't want to draw any more lands. So this game is all about drawing lands. Last game was drawing none of them. I think we just fetch the forest here. <laughs> well, this deck is just mocking us now. Okay, I got Risen Reef. So we should be curving out okay now. We go Questing Beast. We've literally not drawn anything but lands after keeping a four lander. That's actually very humorous. Okay, so they had the Lava Coil. I'm actually going to hold the Fabled Passage. <laughs> uh, I'm going to hold the Fabled Passage because it can let me shuffle if we don't have a creature on top. Let's do Vigilance here. That was just an absolute devastation. And now they Uro. 
not quite enough to escape. We got too cocky. We drew a non land. So I'm actually going to hold back the giant killer. Let's me kill Uro if it comes down. Worst case, I just make a token. When we're outlanding the ramp deck, okay, that's a card. So see if they block here. Give this life link. Kind of surprised there. Little annoying. Uh, if they might put a land. Let's see if they pump up Omnath. Well, they're playing around this giant killer. Well, make a cat here if we can get to 35 life we get to exile all their creatures just hold back so I do have enough for giant killers ability they are at eight lands so they get to draw off Omnath Deals five damage. What is this? Well, oh, there goes a Johnny. We must regroup. Uh, so we don't have green a Johnny. We have um, Vivian and Henge. Yeah. All right, let's fire this up again. This is it. Wasn't what we wanted to start off with. Opponent had some real random answers there. So I'll fire up the deck so everyone can take a look. So for green, we're doing Trustani, uh, Vivian, and the Great Henge main with uh, Knight of Autumn. Sideboard wise, we get Questing Beast and Knight of Autumn. Um, may want. It's not really a deck you see too much. I think we fire it up, run it again. So we're not playing ranked right now. I just threw this deck together before stream, so I want to see if it's something feasible. I'm two wins from Mythic, so I don't want to necessarily tank my rating. Once we're in Mythic, then we can uh, live in the 88% range. Sounds fine. Um... I think I'm going to keep this lined. My play is likely going to be Pride Mate, Pride Mate. Hoping this isn't Wreck. If it is, then we want to save this Knight of Autumn. Yep, so it's Wreck. If they just go Wreck, I can Knight of Autumn it. See if we get flame sweeped here. Night pack ambusher main. So it's a flash version. So our deck probably does nothing against flash. Um, playing one spell per turn isn't going to be great. Let's 
see if this works. It worked. I wanted to get this off because this is going to make a lot of blockers. Uh, next turn we could slam Mothra. Actually, I might do this just to gain some life. Get that going. Ah, uh, they have Pride Mate. Or this for Pride Mates. In retrospect, if they went with... I honestly wasn't expecting this to resolve. Um, so now that they put these up to two... Force their hand. They go down a land here. We have eight one drops in this deck. Haven't drawn a single one. I want to hold this for reclamation. Probably just go with Johnny down tick here. Bottom is good. Keep digging. We're dealing with an Uro next turn. That's a great draw. So this lets me go a Johnny here. Play this out. Play this. Next turn. I might have to pop this Knight of Autumn just to make these bigger. Because then I can use it to block as well. Make another uh, dude there. Play out Wreck. Perfect. Yeah, that's another line too. I think now that they played Wreck, I'm going to wait. I think we... Just do this. Play this out. that now I can block this and then gain some life two off it I think here we just attack in try to get some chip damage in they're gaining three life a turn so want to get something going this might be explosion yeah so now we're probably dead because I can't get back this night of autumn Knight's done its job. So here I'm probably going to plus a Johnny. Yeah, usually what happens is if you can get them before they get to the first explosion, but by then they're just going to be chaining them together. This looks like more of a flash version if they're playing stuff like Bone Crusher. Got the double bone crusher. That's actually good. 
Um, I'm still dead here. Like, I get rid of Uro, but they still have Reclamation, and then they're just playing out these 3-3s. Three Alright, let's go to sideboard. I'm not dead this turn, but at this point, I'm pretty far off. Um, so in this matchup, the Wander is good. Bring in some more Knights. Probably bring in the Giant Killers. They showed a number of 4-drops in their deck. Rid of trust any. I don't. S uh, let's get rid of these omens. They're not that good. Two cuts. Shadow sphere. Probably a great hand. Or Vivian. They're most likely bringing in Storm's Wrath, so Vivian's a worse card in that matchup. So we'll uh, run this one out, see how it goes. Sand is reasonable. Temple on two. This also plays around Flame Sweep. Daxos is nice. Unlike the historic version, you can't really gain like hundreds of life with this deck. So you're not going to necessarily get out of explosion range. Play this out now in case they have shock. We can also protect our Daxos now. I would love a Heliod right now. That would be a great draw. Okay, great henge doesn't do anything right now. Okay, so this is an... Oh, well, we don't have the green mana anyways. Would have liked the land there, so we could have at least started to castle. See if they do something like Storm's Wrath here. Pop this, protect our Daxos. Night Pack Ambusher. So let's see how they block here. Let's give this pro green. And then just Tribunal here. This chip damage might come through. We have Knight of Autumn. So I'm going to do this first. Get them to react. They have a removal spell. Okay. So that gets the Typhoon. So they do need to keep this back, four cards, so they're not quite at Uro yet. If they go another Reclamation, we can pop that again.
may want something like Glass Casket in this matchup. Second Uro is good for them. It's just insulating their life total, buying them time. Alright, what's that? Flame Sweep. Flame sweep me. This comes down, we're good. Got a mystical dispute. Um, I think we just gotta keep pushing damage through. Oh, they're just gonna row this turn. Okay, let's fix up this deck a bit. Seems like we don't have enough early play. So, Trustani out. Luminous Broodmoths felt good. These Omens have felt bad. So let's go up a Moth. Get rid of Shadow Sphere. Hey, thanks, Clench. Yeah, I tried to do... Uh, few videos throughout the week and then a couple on the weekend usually in the evening like eastern time um so what do we want let's try in a johnny great heart and because this could put counters on our things Yeah, maybe we could just go to one hinge. Maybe we put the Gideons in the main. And then that could let us play Glass Casket in the sideboard. And then play... Sweet, yeah, if you just... Uh, DM me the deck list. I'm always down for Abzan. So I can do fight as one. Maybe we do that. Run it kind of like there. Still eight one drops. Gideon, some redundancy against like board wipes. A Johnny also pluses these. So it lets you play effectively potentially three of Johnny's. What a glass casket. Okay, let's run it again. Actually, let me just give Arena a quick reset. It's been a little temperamental today. So normally I do play rank ladder um, for when we're testing out decks, but I'm two wins away from Mythic, so I don't want to... Uh... Oh yeah, that's my favorite like for my background it's the negate art um i'm two wins away from mythic so i don't want to jam kind of bruise right now uh this deck's been carrying me so far this season um just heavy heavy ramp into like turn five genesis ultimatums uh it wins i'm seven and oh with the deck right now that and originally i was gonna play absent or a ju uh jun sacrifice tonight but that deck takes a lot of thinking and I'm not in the heavy, heavy thinking every line play. Sometimes it's just uh, nicer to turn creatures sideways than to nickel and dime points of damage. Um, if you want to play Tolls Mirror, most of the Bant... Um, try this out. Uh, most of the Bant... Um, Ramp control decks play three tolls mirrors in the side. Probably draw another land. There was like the Abzan Wolves deck. That's maybe reasonable. The problem is like a lot of these mid-range decks, as soon as your opponent plays counter spells and they can one for one you, 
you fall pretty far behind. Let's go Pride Mate here. So ideally, if they don't interact with Pride Mate this turn, I get to go Gideon, give my Pride Mate lifelink. They went Island, so no clue what they're on yet. Fetch Island can be pretty much anything. It is the most powerful play in Magic. Opponent is considering all the ops they can play. Maybe an Unsummon. Okay, Bant. Bant Control. So this lets us chip in. Oh my god, just play your growth spiral. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to just get to Ferried here. Bounce my pride mate. Which isn't the end of the world, because then I just go Gideon, attack the Teferi down, play this, play all seed, and the pride mate again, then follow it up with Heliod. To fair, a Gideon main board is actually very good against this deck. Like, they can play Conker's Death, but that takes their whole turn. So, just attack in here. Doesn't matter here. So I'm doing this, so in case they have another Teferi, I can protect my Pride Mate. If not, what I can do is um, play out Helio next turn, and then have multiple life gain triggers. It doesn't matter here. They have a sweep. So we run the same play as last time. Gideon can also exile something now. Yes, I would have liked an additional land just so I could have played Heliod and still had up the effect, but I think for this turn we're good. Opponents at 10. If they play Elspeth Conquer's Death, it gets rid of Gideon. But then I play Heliod and then gain a bunch. Well, no, nope. opponent's top decking as well. And the thing too is here, um... I think we do a Johnny here. Put a counter on it, makes it a tur two turn clock. Aether Gusts decline here. So if we can dodge the Conqueror's Death, we're okay. Kind of unfortunate that we let them actually use this Aether Gust. And they have Conqueror's Death, and now we basically lose. Another day, so I could Tribunal here. First draw in our deck so I'm doing this because I don't want them to get to fairy back but at this point they're like an Uro away from just they can basically cast Uro get Uro back they go back up to 12 and then we're pretty much far too far behind then chaining literal to fairy bounce, shatter, shatter, conquers death. Too much value. You show remorse. I'll show restraint. No, yeah. I am not 
Next turn they bounce this. They get yeah. That. I hate band control. Like I stopped playing a lot of standard back then because of this deck. Um, so we're really just bringing in. So fight items ones are still decent. This Ajani's not that great in this matchup. Mothra's fine. Henge is probably not that great against a Conquer Death deck. Um, probably go down a Heliod. I don't want to draw multiples and also go down a Conclave Tribunal. I just bant. The thing is, against Luca, once they got Agent out, you knew you were pretty much dead. Against Bank Control, like in that game there, we, we thought we're doing well, we thought we're doing well. Get him down to like six life, then it's just like board wipe, exile, Uro, Uro, Dream Trawler, back up to 40 life. And that game takes like 45 minutes to play. I'm fine to lose, but let me lose quick. I don't want to play like 40 minute games just to find out we're dead. I think this deck may be a little too clunky. There's not enough ways. Yeah, I actually saw, so someone put together a Jeskai Luka deck um, that ran Teo instead of Narset and then played four Dream Trawlers. So you protect everything with Hexproof, you get the, the walls and then you just make them into Dream Trawlers. All right, we'll try this out. All seed into Knight of Autumn into Questing Beast, kill their Teferi. Yeah, because Dream Trawler is not legendary, so you can just have like three or four. All right, who's ready to get board wiped? Glass Casket. Um, let's attack in here. Uh, I, I like her. Um, I don't know if this is the shell for her. We don't have a lot of ways to really abuse her minus. She was really good in the Gruel Fires list because you... Minus her, you place a Red Cavalier, and then you go get Questing Beast, and then you haste everything. So I didn't want to commit more to the board there. Especially with Gross Spiral, they can sweep now. If they have targeted removal, I can protect. If they have a Shatter, I get to draw a card and then follow it up with Questing Beast. Yeah, life gain lands could have been reasonable. Let's see what they do here. Get pro white. The next turn, I drop questing beast. Hit him for eight. Follow it up with Vivian. So it's a little riskier this way playing the Questing Beast out because that gets rid of our Haster. Because they can go Shatter here into Conquer's Death. But even if they do that line, I still make a 3-3. Three, three. See what they do here. The scry lines are probably fine just because it lets us filter through our draw a little bit better. Because like, I think we already been the Fable Passage. Okay, so QB's coming down. Oh, I've done the hero thing 
They don't have an answer, they're dead. Oh, they have the casket. That's actually a fantastic draw, because we take Teferi off the board here, and then we fight as one for their removal. Just hoping it's not um, Conquer's death. Only time will tell. If it's just a Shatter the Sky, then we protect it here. No Conquer's death. No Conquer's death. Uro is fine. I'm gonna actually hang on to this because I can bot this. If they have like board wipe or something after, get that back. No, Aether Gust is good here. Uh, give this Trample. You have the Shatter. Gideon's actually a really good draw there too. So if we get a land, then we go Knight of Autumn, get back our thing. Minus Vivian, get another Pride Mate. So let's go Trample. Every day let's play you out. Let's play you out. We can banish evil from this place. I think we might have this one. Won't let me give it super life link. Escape arrow here. Escape arrow takes him to five. They are still dead. Because Gideon attacks in. I can also... Oh, they have Tef. Tef block the token. Or bounce the token. I don't think I played when, uh, was that before Innistrad? When lifelink stacked? So, this is how we do this. So, minus this. Cast this. Go get all seed. Do this. Sack this. Give this pro green. Exaxes. Or minus one. All right, taking down meta decks. Um, I still don't think we want Uro. Vivian felt nice there. Mothra is probably fine. Do I want a Johnny instead of a Mothra? Probably not. The rest of this seems reasonable. I might want it. Yeah, you know what? Just differentiate because this can put counters on these small things to let them attack through. Gideon's been great, actually. Drink, thanks for the follow. Much appreciated. I think we can keep this. I 
not in love with this hand, but if we can draw one drop, it'd be good. How about a three drop? Best I can give you. You know your hand that's all three and four drops? I think we're gonna be too slow this game. Uh, I should have played the temple tapped. Actually, this isn't bad because if they try to Teferi, I can uh, sack it. They always have Growth Spiral. So turn th they're gonna turn four conquers death, I guess. Could also like Sharknado here. So I'm doing this pre-combat because I can give the all seed vigilance in case they play Nisa in this deck. I can block the elemental token. So big difference between this game and the game we won. We aren't really presenting pressure here and the opponent's been able to do what they want to do. Probably just go blow it up. So kept the land open for Teferi bounce. They're still off from Uro. They need two cards in the yard. Card we're probably not beating. Dream Trawler. If they have an answer for Questing Beast, then we're done. So the problem is they're gaining at least five life a turn. Well, we're only attacking for four. But even if they escape Uro, I can Conclave Tribunal it, try to get this Pride Mate going and just attacking with more. It's a good draw for us here. Gideon to get this Life Link. Nisa. That also changes the math a bit with blocking. Okay, so they don't have blue mana up. Oh, this might be Glass Casket, just based on how they tapped. Keep the V in here, just pretty good card advantage. So what I'm actually going to do this turn is 
Conclave Tribunal, the land. That lets me attack in with everything. Oh, you can't target lands. Oops. I should probably read my cards. Vivian's actually pretty good because I could just keep making things with reach. And then block the dream trawler while trying to amass some sort of pressure. Still off of Uro. Five, so they don't have enough yet. Dream Trawler is really just something we don't beat in our deck. on opponent okay if they uro here that might take them off dispute they might have aether gust still The shock there kind of indicates. One, two, three, four, five, six. Worked out nicely. Elemental cat dinosaurs? I love you, Coria. So let's give this reach. We will adapt to any threat. So opponent can get Uro back, so we're dealing with that. So we're still pretty far behind. By no means are we in the driver's seat here. Opponents at 39 cards. And they're, at this point, they're also just like, ah, Nisa. Yeah, if this is Nisa, I'm just going to concede. We're at like 1% to win this game. And the opponent is going super meticulous. All right. Uh, so in conclusion, this deck is a steaming pile. Uh, I would not craft it. Um, idea was there. Execution, not so much. Ooh. Get my one rare wild card. Um, the adventure deck was pretty good. The Gruel Adventure. This one, not so much. Um, didn't really know what I wanted to do. Uh, I did like... What'd we like? This interaction felt nice. All Seed, Knight of Autumn, Gideon. So maybe a shell like that. Uh, Heliode's just not pulling its weight. There's not enough triggers. Same with Pride Mate. This kind of lackluster. Mothra was pretty good when we got it out. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Appreciate everyone stopping by. Uh, if you missed any of the videos, you can catch up on YouTube. Uh, probably come back next time with uh, Unpredictable Cyclone Jeskai, where you turn Boon of the Wish Givers for one mana into Inspired Ultimatum. Uh, so it's a fairy deck, but a different type of Jeskai. Anyways, thanks for stopping by. Stay safe out there and have a great one.